Yo guys, what's up? My name is Farza, and let's this can be a quick video that's gonna cover a little bit about functions that I didn't talk about last video because I ran out of time. So this is the last function we made, and this function just prints out the Q damage that a champion does when we give it, you know, a number. But what we didn't cover is returning stuff. So this function returns nothing, so, and that's given, and that, we know that because it. It says void, which means we get back nothing from the function. Let's think of a uh, function that we can make where we need to return a value. So let's just say this, this, let's just delete this. Let's say that we wanted a function that did a calculation and then we wanted to get that number it calculated and store it back in our main. How do we do that? Well, let's, let's think of an example. So let's think about infinity edge, right? Let's say I give a function my current attack damage, and then it calculates how much attack damage I have once I buy Infinity Edge. Understand? So let's do that. So let's let's first of all we have to make our function. So remember our our function is gonna have a return type. It's gonna have a name. It's gonna have parameters. So first of all, what are we gonna return? So if we give a function or attack damage, and, and attack damage is always an integer, right? Almost always is it, I can't think of a situation where you have a decimal attack damage. So our attack damage is always gonna be an integer. And Infinity Edge gives us 65 attack damage, which is an integer. So an integer plus an integer is gonna be an integer. So we are gonna return an integer value, which means our function is gonna give us back some integer. It, and it has to be an integer. It can't be a float. It can't be a string. It has to be an integer. Let's give it our name, which we can just say add infinity edge. Infinity edge. Add infinity edge. Cool. And now we have to give parameters. The only parameter we're going to give it uh, is uh, we can just give it our current damage, our current AD, I mean. Current AD. And next we have our function. And by the way, I did not mention in the last video that you can have multiple parameters. You can have a parameter called float current AP. All right? It doesn't matter, really. You can have as many parameters as you want. But the most parameters that I've ever had in a function is five. So um, don't put too many parameters. I, it's not, don't get too crazy with it. But just know you can have multiple parameters. And they can, they can, they can be different types. That's fine. But in this, in this situation, we're just going to have one parameter, and it's going to have, and we're going to give it our current attack damage. So now all we want to do is let's declare a new variable. Let's say new damage, and new damage is going to equal current AD, which is what we get from our from our parameter, plus 65, which is how much damage Infinity Edge gives you. And just to prove it to you guys, Infinity Edge gives us 65 attack damage. There we go. I confirmed this. Okay, so it adds 65 to our current AD, and it's assigned to the value new damage. So now, this is something that people get confused. I can't just go in my main method. I can't just do this. I can't just say new damage is percent %d um, new damage. So just because I say new damage is equal to this up here, it doesn't mean that I can use it down here. What happens in my function stays in my function. And we're going to learn other ways where you know we can get around this. But for now, just know that whatever is in our function can't get out of our function. Whatever stays in Vegas, whatever happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, right? And that's that that's what we're that's our mentality right here. Where if I say new in, new damage and I say new damage is now equal to this, I can't just reference new damage in my main. Because whatever happened in my function stays in my function, and like I said before, we're gonna uh, we're gonna talk about other ways to get around this using pointers and things like that. But um, for now, just know that. So this is completely wrong. Never do this. It's terrible. Okay, you can't just reference a variable that's not in your function that you made in another function. So you know, I made this variable in up here, and I'm trying to call it in my main, which is another function. And by the way, I didn't mention to you guys your main is a function now. You see that, right? It has a return type, it returns zero, and you know it has a name, it has parameters. It has no parameters, so it's void. That's totally cool. So you, you can have a function with no parameters, but you know, just sort of side note right there. Anyways, back to our function. So now 
we want our we want to return something. So let me just do something here. Let me call our function add infinity edge. And let's say our current AD is at 100. So we're going to add 100 plus 65. So how to, how do I get the value? How do, how does our function do the calculation up here? And then how do we grab that value? How do we store that value back in main so that we can actually use it and print it out? Well, let me show you. Now, all I'm going to do from here is I'm going to return new damage. And new damage is an integer variable. It holds an, oh, it holds an integer variable. And we're saying that our function is going to return an integer. So this, is, this is perfect. So in this case, we're going to return an integer variable which you know it just it's this calculation and that's all it does it's returning this integer so now how do we grab the value of this of this new damage how do we grab new damage like we can't just reference new damage down here how do we actually get this value well this is how you do it we're going we're going to call a new uh call a new variable we're going to call it int um function return and this integer and this variable is going to hold the value that our function returns. So now this is so you guys know that this is how you call a function, right? But our function is giving us back something, right? Oh, what the heck is this? My bad. So in in our last video, our function is void, which means it did nothing. It just did a job for us, and then it's over. But in this case, our function does a job, and it gives something back to us. So we have to do a little bit more. We have to say that function return is going to be equal to um, function. It's going to be equal to our function call. So now let's. This is probably a little hard to wrap your mind around, but let's think about it. We're saying to go to add infinity edge with the parameter of 100. So it goes up here, and it says int current ad is equal to 100. It says int new damage. It says new damage is equal to current AD, which is 100, plus 65. So now new damage is equal to 165. And then it says to return that new value that we just calculated. And when we do return, we are allowed to do this. So once we return something, our function, like our function call, pretty much turns into whatever we return, right? So in this case, my it could be and it just returns like a number. So in the end, this is all it's doing. It's setting it's returning a number. It like transforms our function call. Imagine that it just transforms into a number. And that number that it transforms into is the number that it's returning. Or whatever it's returning. It could be returning anything you want. It could be returning a string, a character, a float. But in this case it's returning an integer number. And this function, you know, finishes its um it, it turns into a butterfly and it turns into a, uh, a, a number, an integer number, integer value. And that's all this is doing. So now we can actually reference this number in our main method. We can say new damage is now equal to percent D. Oh, equal, equals percent D. Uh, and what? And now remember, we can't just say new damage. We cannot reference this va this variable up here. It's it's not allowed right now. Like I said, we're gonna figure out another way to do it later. But we can't just reference new damage because it's not in our function. And whatever happens in our function stays in our function. So we can't do that. Instead, we grab the value of new damage using our function, and by using this variable called function return function return function return cool so now new damage is equal to function return which is simply the value that this that this method that this function returned okay so let's run this now see what happens hopefully it doesn't bug out okay so, so oh whoa, what what is this you guys probably think I'm dumb okay that's not allowed I don't know why I put that there all right, so zero errors, zero warnings, perfect. Now new damage is equal to 165, which is exactly what we want, which is 100 plus 65, which is exactly what we calculated in our head before we actually before we actually ran the function. So you know, just to now, just I hope you guys understand completely what's going on here, and just to like 
mess with you guys a little bit, make sure you truly understand the concept. I can also do this. I can put my function call in my print statement. I can be like this. And I can say build. So why is this allowed? Whoops. What's going on? Uh, so why is this allowed? Why am I allowed to do new damage is equal to my, like, what's going on here? Remember, this me this function returns an integer. It returns a value. So now this percent %d, like, remember, this is going to transform into whatever we want it to. So in this case, it transformed to, transforms to 165. But really, it transforms to, you know, it's, it's returned to us as that value. 165. So then our this percent %d will go into that value, grab it, and print it out. So that's why this is allowed. Add infinity edge for 100. And if you understand this, I think you are pretty good with function at this point. And I'm actually at 11 minutes now, so sorry about that. And I'm going to end the video right here. So see you guys later.